But in the meantime, we want to talk about Harmony's beautiful life and what perhaps could have happened to her if her biological father hadn't asserted his parental rights and kept her when he was clearly unfit to parent a child. I want to welcome in a very special guest. He is the adoptive father for Harmony Montgomery's biological brother, Jameson. I want to welcome in my friend, Blair Miller. Uh, Blair, uh, you are a personal friend of mine and you are also a colleague. Um, I want our courties uh, to know you've worked in journalism for a long, long time. You've worked at the local level, at the national level. Uh, you're working uh, for uh, Boston 25 News. Now you're also a writer. You write for the Washingtonian uh, in DC. Um, this has to be so hard as being dad and also being someone who works in the media, who's, who's a public figure. Uh, first question to you, please. How are you and your family doing this morning? No, and, and Julie, thanks for having me on. Thanks for your friendship and, and thanks for all that you all do on this uh, story because it is important to talk about. You know, um, I've read through many affidavits in my lifetime. Um, we knew this was coming. We knew the details of this. Um, but when you read through all that, it's, as you said, it's sickening. It's disturbing, beyond disturbing, to read the details of what was happening in this little girl's reality, knowing that it didn't have to happen. And I think that's truly the hardest part of all this. My husband and I uh, started reading some of this yesterday. We'd take breaks, we'd cry, we'd hear from friends, and then we'd read again. And um, it's just really hard to imagine any of it, but really to imagine um, the life that Harmony Montgomery was living um, and, and how she was put in that situation that didn't have to happen and that's the hardest part right Blair and, and I want to go into more of that if I may please I told our courties on the show who are so interested in this case and their hearts break for harmony and I know as they're getting to know you more and more um, I'm sure they'll be reaching out to you and, and be following you uh, in everything you've been uh, putting out about this case uh, for Jameson and, and your other boys um, what, what really saddens me, and I mentioned this on the show, and I would love for you to speak to it if you would, please, is that you and your wonderful husband, Jonathan, were willing to adopt Harmony too at the time that you adopted Jameson, but Adam Montgomery had asserted his parental rights with Harmony. A am I correct on that, Blair? Sure, yeah, and so Jameson is our third son. You know, our older two we adopted, and then um, we wanted to adopt again, or it found us. And we were matched with Jameson. And the day we were matched with him, we were instantly told he has a sister. He's been in foster care with this sister. She took care of him. And we said, tell us more about her. And we learned her name, Harmony. And we learned about her background. And we said instantly, what do we need to do? Um, because if Jameson has a close relationship with her, we want to have a close relationship with her as well and told um, social services in Massachusetts instantly uh, we'd be open to adopting her as well if that's what needed to happen and <clears throat> we were quickly told well that's a different situation and um, she's been reunited with her biological father and we continue to say please leave that door open because um, it's important to Jameson and, and even now he talks about her and talks about how much she has meant to him and we wish we could have tried harder we wish we could have done more we wish that door was still open um at the time and we continue to ask you know how is harmony doing and how can we still have a relationship with her how can jameson have a relationship with her um and and we never got anywhere on that uh, Blair, uh, you and your husband are the most wonderful people. Uh, people like you are truly angels on earth, uh, adopting three boys, giving them the most wonderful life they could ever have. And the fact that you were willing to adopt Harmony too, that she was loved, even though you really didn't even know her yet, you, you loved her and you wanted to bring her in. And I have to tell you, my friend, all I kept thinking about yesterday, reading that affidavit, was that you and Jonathan saved Jameson's life. 
all I kept thinking wow. about was if, if his dad would have asserted his parental rights with Jameson too, I can't imagine what kind of danger he would have been in. I, I would think it would have been the same danger that Harmony was in. We think about that a lot. We think about the life Harmony could have. We think about the life Jameson and Harmony could have together. Uh, we worry deeply about how this is going to impact Jameson. Our motivation all along has been, this isn't about us. This is about how is Jameson gonna judge this when he is 15, 20, 25, 30, et cetera. And I, I'm, I'm starting to struggle with, um, I always thought we could navigate that pretty well. Um, but when you read stuff like what we read yesterday, knowing the details of it, knowing what's gonna come out in court, um, you, you, you start to, as a father, I, I start to question the peace that Jameson will ever have with this when he's old enough to really, truly understand it. Um, you know, going through that affidavit yesterday, I told you this yesterday, there was a date that uh, stuck out to us and that was December 7th of 2019. And in, in the court paperwork, they talk about how that was the day they believe that Harmony died. And we were going back through our own calendar and that was the first birthday we celebrated with Jameson um, after we had officially adopted him. And we can't help but struggle to think about how we were here celebrating him, celebrating his life, celebrating him being a Miller while his sister was experiencing a whole different world and reality. And that is really a tough thing to um, try to understand. You can't understand it. No, uh, because it is, it is so, sickening and evil uh, what happened to this beautiful little girl uh, who was loved by your family who was wanted by your family and to think that she was living in a car um, perhaps didn't even have enough food to eat when I was reading the affidavit a neighbor was kind enough to give them some Thanksgiving leftovers didn't have a bathroom to use um, it, it's it's just heartbreaking uh, as you know Blair and uh, I, I want to highlight some of the incredible things that you and Jonathan and your three boys do to remember Harmony and and just the other day I believe it was on June the 7th if I'm correct Harmony's birthday uh, you have a tradition right I, I want you to tell our viewers about that we have one of your tweets uh, where you put some pictures up and and you talked about what little Jameson says about how all rivers and oceans lead to heaven Jameson is a really special little boy and he's six years old and he is wise beyond his years. And he is also very matter of fact about his relationship with Harmony. He knows she has passed. She know, he knows she's in heaven. And my husband, Jonathan and, and Jameson talk a lot about this and talk a lot about, you know, how to remember her. And we'll constantly be in the store and say, hey, you know, Jameson, what, what would Harmony's favorite toy be? What would her favorite color be? And we try to include that part of this conversation. Um, but for her birthday each year, we, we celebrate it. And um, this past birthday, we went to the Potomac here in DC and we had gotten nine purple flowers, her favorite color. And that's a picture of our three boys. And we took them over there and, and had a moment. And uh, Jameson had said he wanted to put them in the river because all rivers lead to heaven. And for a six year old boy to be able to communicate that, um, it just hits you in the gut. And um, again, this is about you know trying to create some bit of normalcy for Jameson so that one day he knows that he did all he could and we did all we could. Certainly, and you are, uh, Blair, I, I applaud you for being so courageous. Uh, to be sharing things so personal publicly to try to have everyone remember what a precious little angel she was. You tweeted something out to that effect about you want people to not remember the bad or what happened, but you know remember that this was a beautiful little child who was loved. Well, we've, we've always been very outspoken about adoption and we've always tried to be really advocates for adoption. You know, you talk about the good things we're doing. These boys are doing good things for us and I don't want that to be lost on us, um, lost on them because they've saved us, um, you know, and they are, uh, have made us better people by adopting. We haven't made them better. Um, and we've, we've just tried to be very public about this at first because we wanted to find harmony. We still want to find harmony. Um, 
And now it's turned into what are we doing to make sure this doesn't happen again? And we have to look at through the lens of Jameson of how he will judge us and society for how everyone treated his sister. And so it's so important to us that we focus on the good. There's a lot of evil in this world right now. There's a lot of evil in this case. And for us, it's just trying to focus on the good and focus on the positivity of this sweet little girl that when we look at her picture that we see love and we see a sweet little angel that we don't see evil. Oh, Blair, so beautifully said. I, I can't say enough. You and Jonathan are remarkable people raising three remarkable little boys. I think Jameson is going to grow up to do very big things uh, and, and maybe largely in honor of his sister. Uh, thank you for sharing all of this personal information with us. And I know our courties are going to want to give you some love. And uh, please follow Blair at Bla Blair Miller TV. Uh, I believe that's your handle across the board, right, Blair? Yeah. And, and thank you to you and Court TV for all that you are doing to bring awareness to this because it, it is needed. So many people have been uh, so supportive and and. Yesterday I broke down when I was reading the comments from people that they said about that stuff. And that stuff matters and it really, it, it helps and it'll be important for us to all kind of digest uh, later as well. So thank you very much. Oh my gosh, of course, uh, no thanks is necessary. Uh, we give you our love and our prayers. Blair Miller, thank you so much for all thanks, of this Jill. this morning.